Pardon me. Well, I see you've joined the team. Oscar had his eye on you from the beginning. What a strange fellow. How well do you know him? He's elusive, but he pays well. Just remember, now you're in, you're in. There's no way out short of death. What a comforting thought. You're a woman. What does he want me for? Isn't it obvious? I have some skills, but sadly, flirtation is not among them. Good luck. In the theatre we say, break a leg. All right. Let me know if you need help with a splint. Sorry to bother you again. What now? Here is a note a gentleman handed me. My heart is yours to take or trample. This is very touching. Who sent it? What's his name? I really don't know. Is he handsome? Why doesn't he introduce himself directly? He's very mysterious. And Herr Zollinger is in the room, watching your every move. Ugh, of course. Rupert. <laughs> Let's have some fun. I'll write a reply. But no, wait. I need a pen. I just had a thought. Why, hello. I need a pen. Can you help me? Anything for you, Mata. Here's what you need to arrange a tryst. I count the hours to a rendezvous. Promise not to be dull and responsible. That doesn't sound very loyal. If Rupert paid more attention, I'd be more loyal. Herr Zollinger, I feel honor bound to show you. Isn't this Mademoiselle Royer's handwriting? I count the hours. Oh, does she now? Why do I waste my money on that wicked woman? Without a thought, she flirts with everyone in sight. I just had a thought. What now? Mademoiselle Royer, a word to the wise, if I may. Be cautious about Herr Zollinger's intentions. About Rupert? His intentions? What do I care? Well, in talking to him just now, he casually mentioned that he thinks you're an expensive, brainless flirt. He does not. Was he making a joke? He wouldn't dare. And if he did, it's in terrible taste. And, and that would be the last straw. That cad. He's belittled me for the last time. Sorry to bring bad news. Uh, bring him some bad news. Tell that idiot he's an idiot. Hello again. Madame.
Mademoiselle Royer wishes me to convey her most cordial scorn for your cruel ways. Is that so? Her exact words were, tell that idiot he's an idiot. That brainless little minx. To hell with her. I'm very sorry your romance has turned out so badly. No, no. It's a relief. Many thanks for ridding me of that troublesome creature. I appreciate your gratitude, but I can't help wondering, do your feelings end with gratitude or, well, go further? How strikingly forward of you, Mademoiselle Matahari. Now it's my turn to wonder, could you possibly be attempting to seduce me? You decide. An obvious man of the world like you must know that seduction is an art and has its rules. Rules? I'm intrigued. Would you like to hear more about the rules of seduction? But of course. Unless there aren't 400 of these things, are there? I'm not a patient man. I don't pretend to know all the rules. I only use four to fit the four basic types of men. Only four? Such a small number. Does Herr Dr. Freud know? The simplest technique is to flatter the man, but it only works on men who are gentlemen enough not to take advantage of a lady, and yet who are unsure of themselves. He's not much of a man if he doesn't believe in his own worth. One technique is to play the part of the poor, helpless girl. It can draw a shy man out of his shell, but it can be dangerous if he is a natural brute, particularly if he is insecure and needs to prove himself. Men like that can be dangerous, it's true, but sometimes they're useful. Some women like to feign ennui and dismiss a man. A man who is very confident or arrogant will rise to the challenge. Otherwise, one must entice him a bit first, then back away. So, that's how women think. And I assumed that they were so sincere. A daring approach is to take charge, reverse roles and break the man to your will. Very effective with an insecure man who is also a bit of a brute, but a gentleman may be put off. I can see how a headstrong woman like yourself might find that role appealing. But consider my case. What approach would you use with me if I deigned to take an interest in you? With such an intelligent man as yourself, only direct honesty will serve. You're too smart to fall for any tricks. How true. Those simple ploys seem like children's toys. Oh yes. For instance, you're far too wise and virile to fall for abject flattery. Quite. You are certainly a fascinating woman. Here. For saving me from romantic disaster, a trinket I had foolishly bought for Danielle. And could I interest you in a late night drink in my hotel room? Lead on, Rupert. You're dozing, Rupert. Am I boring you, or just too much champagne? Too much exercise, I think. This may be just the tonic I need. Well, look, here's a useful tool.
Maybe I can make Rupert more comfortable. Matter, where are you? Come back to bed. How about a little nightcap to celebrate our evening together? Hmm. That's good. Here's to us. Good night. I can't just take this. Rupert will know who did it. He'll come after me. Somewhere, was it Monsieur Samsonet or a cheap novel, I learned that spies leave no traces. What's this? A scrap of paper, nothing to do with any sigil, but it looks suspicious. French Navy now fabricating submarine pressure valves from anti-corrosive phosphor bronze. Hmm, this might be valuable information. This might be useful. Aha! A source of heat. What? The flame blew out. There is a breeze blowing in through that window. There. No more night breezes. Matter, my dear. I miss you already. With two in a bed, sometimes it's hard to sleep. Here, try this. Comfy now? Hmm, how thoughtful. That's better. Hmm. Hmm. This should heat things up. Well now, that did the job. A perfect impression. And I will make a perfect impression on Monsieur Samsonet. Tonight, just as I thought my dance career was assured, I met a strange gentleman who made me think hard about the future, and I became a spy instead. God help me. Shall we continue? Three years pass. What about Mata? Her career, and this espionage business, did that really happen? Oh, yes. She danced, her daring made her famous, and she spied, no one suspected. You're shocked, but she never cared what other people thought. It's been three years since I met that man, Samsonet. Is that his real name? And the world has changed. As he predicted, I dance, but not often. Now and then he gives me some small task, but so far, nothing important. I can't complain. The money is good. Looking back, meeting him almost seems like a dream. Come in. Bonjour, madame. 
Pardon me, I, I know I'm intruding. Did I get the room right? You are Matahari the dancer, yes? What can I do for you, madame? I'm not sure. I've read about you. You're an independent woman. A woman who succeeds by her wits. I admire that. It's rare in a world made for men. And, well, I need some advice. One independent woman to another? Yes. I too am battling the narrow-minded society narrow-minded men have created for us. Do you hate men? Not at all. My husband, bless his soul, was killed by an automobile. Now, after many months, I... I am no longer in mourning. I see. You met a man and you like him. Good for you. But you don't know how to approach him, how to get him to notice you. You have it. That's exactly my problem. You need to understand seduction, my dear. That's all. Tell me, what sort of man is he? A gentleman or a brute? He's a scientist. Educated, but not refined. He's very patient. Gentleman, then, broadly speaking. Is he confident or insecure? He's brilliant, but shy. He avoids looking at me, but sometimes... Insecure, then? Well, there is only one path to success. If you want him, you must flatter him. Everything he does is wonderful. You're fascinated by his charm, his knowledge, his ideas. That's all very well for you. But I'm not pretty, and I'm not young, and... Don't worry. You're a woman. Behave like one. When he offers you a cigarette, take it. Ask for a light. Move around in your chair when you're with him. Signal your intentions, and in his eyes, you will be beautiful. You think so? I'm quite sure. Ah, uh, merci beaucoup. Wait, you still haven't told me your name. Yes, I suppose I should. I'm Madame Curie. Marie Curie, the renowned chemist. Yes, and no one must find out I came to see you. It will be our womanly secret. Your ideas. I will try them. They'll make a fine experiment in human chemistry. Bonjour, Elspeth. Mata, there you are. I've been looking everywhere. Oscar wants to see you. Tell him to meet me at Giroux. I'm off to lunch. Not here. Not in Paris. What's the matter? What's wrong? Nothing. Oscar is uncomfortable in Paris. He feels exposed. He prefers Monte Carlo. It's neutral territory. Take the train. Very well. I understand. And Mata, be careful. The journey will be dangerous. Foreign agents will be on the prowl. If they corner you, you'll have to start again. Taxi? Where to, madame? Gare du Nord, please. Please, get in. Hello there. Uh, destination? Take it to... Monaco, please. This is my first train journey since I became a spy. While traveling as a civilian is easy and mostly enjoyable, now being a spy, I have to be much more careful and must select each step with caution. I cannot simply sit in the train until it arrives at my final destination. Instead, I have to travel from station to station, 
and decide which way to go next. An enemy agent is on the hunt for me, and if we end up at the same station, he will arrest me and take me back to my starting point. No, I don't have time to laze around. Bonjour, Monsieur Samsonet. Ah, Martha. Beautiful as always, even in that shapeless dress. Please, sit. Monsieur and Madame are too stiff for conspirators like us. Call me Oscar, s'il vous plaît. Do you prefer Mata or your real name? When I was a child, people called me Greet, short for Gertrude. I don't feel much like that child anymore. Mata it is. Now, to business. I suppose Elspeth explained. She was very mysterious, as you no doubt intended. Good. Good for her. Well, what shall I tell you? Last week, British and French diplomats conducted long talks in Paris. My client wants to know what they have discussed. Can it be so momentous? I have no idea. If one plays cards at the casino, it helps to know what's in the other fellow's hands, yes? I suppose. How am I to help these card sharps? The British ambassador is on vacation at the moment. I know, because he's here in Monaco. Go to the embassy in Paris and photograph his notes. I'm no sneak thief. I'll be caught and spend the rest of my life in jail. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a spy after all. Too late for doubts. You're one of us now. Espionage. Well, you know it's like marriage. Till death do us part. But how on earth? Think. You have a certain strength of character. And of course you also have. Yes, I know. My womanly wiles. All right then. I'll flirt my way in. You'll need a camera. It should look like a tourist's, but it must have the finest lens. And where, pray tell? A fine shrugner. She'll have what you need. The French fear a German invasion and want to make alliance with the British. However, they hesitate. Something, some new weapon possibly, has given them a chip on their shoulder. Let's find out what it is. The British Embassy. Secret papers. Photographs. This is real spying. No mistakes allowed, or my famous name will be in the newspaper and not in the art section. Taxi? Where to, man? Train station, please. Let's go. 